So are we ready? We so tell us one minutes. second. Yeah, and I'll just ask a simple question. Give you simple answers. <laughs> simple people. Simple. Okay, we're ready? Yep. All right, so um, welcome. Um, I, you know, I, I am, uh, something happened in psychology uh, that made the news as a headline. That's um, not unusual. Uh, yes, but uh, maybe it's an unusual way. Or, or, or let me put it this way. It's, uh, uh, psychology made the news in a way that perhaps many psychologists would prefer didn't make the news. And in the New York Times, it says many psychology findings, not as strong as claim, study sets. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and the article goes on to uh, highlight how a significant number of uh, major psych psychological studies uh, uh, could not be replicated by a group of uh, young researchers. And uh, uh, so my, basically, I want to know what you guys think. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, and perhaps my first question is: is, uh, is there a crisis in psychological research? This is indicating some sort of crisis in psychological research. So, whoever would like to talk, and maybe I, uh, I'm Jeff Goldfarb, the uh, editor of Public Seminar, and maybe each of you introduce yourselves uh, for the first time. Just sure. Here. So I'm uh, Jeremy Safran, a professor in the psychology department on the board of Public Seminar. No, and then, uh, okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay. And Bill Hurst also in the psychology department. And Academy also, also in the department of psychology. Okay, so it's three eminent psychologists I want to uh, address my curiosity. Do you want to say anything about areas of expertise? Or? No, no, no. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll put that uh, okay. in writing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you think? Well, why don't one of you go first? I, 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 I suspect I'll be have the dissenting perspective on this, but maybe not. Well, I mean, first of all, with respect to the Times article, it's important to point out that uh, um, the the committee that did this this uh, sort of organized these replication efforts um, emphasizes that this is probably not a problem of just in psychology, but a problem of probably a problem in all sciences if it's considered a problem. Um, uh, my own feeling is that um, uh, there are some psychological effects which are very strong. There are obviously that replicate fairly easily. There are some psychological effects which are more subtle uh, and um, involve more, let's say, individual difference parameters than you would expect uh, uh, for other ones, uh, certain other uh, phenomena. Uh, and the failure to replicate um, could uh, arise because of a lot of reasons, but what, what inevitably happens is that a lot of the discussion is, if you like, more synchronic than dichronic. It doesn't, it, it um, emphasizes that this particular experiment at this particular time doesn't replicate. It, what it doesn't see is that the field as a whole, if there is a continual replication uh, failure, um, uh, will essentially begin not to believe in this phenomenon. It's not that and, and in a variety of, I can think of a variety of phenomena, such as there's something called priming. Um, uh, and there was a lot of research done in the 90s, uh, um, and, uh, which um, uh, essentially shows things like if somebody reads an article about an old person, and then if you time the amount of time it takes them to walk down the hallway, they walk a lot slower than if they had read an article about uh, the weather. Um, so basically the notion was that the article about old people primed them to act like an old person and walk slowly. These uh, results are very subtle. Uh, they do not, they are difficult to replicate. Um, uh, there's probably something there. Um, uh, uh, it probably reflects something about our behavior. Um, uh, it is probably also the case that they were oversold in that uh, they were framed as, uh, in terms of uh, big, large issues like free will, and indicated that we didn't have free will, we were controlled by all these sort of mm -hmm. subtle effects which we were not aware of, 
And that was probably too strong a claim. So there's one is a narrow experiment, whether it replicates or not. My feeling is the field, after a while, realizes it doesn't replicate because it's just an interesting finding. People will try to replicate it. And although that doesn't, these replication failures have not, until recently, actually appeared in the literature, people talk. It's, it's a community. It's not an individual that are doing things. And people begin to realize where they should put their money in, in terms of further research. So there's the, the, the community aspect, there's the diachronic aspect, and these sorts of efforts in which they take one experiment, usually, and if you look at the ones that they um, uh, try to replicate, they're pretty subtle types of mm -hmm. phenomenon. Right. And, uh, and then they so, and then they essentially cast uh, a, a sort of a, 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 a dispersion on the entire field. As, uh, uh, as Jeff uh, indicated, that he, he walks away thinking there's something problematic about the field. Whereas I think there's nothing problematic about the field. It's the way science works. The strong phenomenon will emerge and eventually get into your introduction to psychology textbook. And the weaker ones will um, uh, never make it into the introductory psychology textbook. And, and uh, uh, I, I think that's once one views it as a more um, long-term process and a community effort process as opposed to an individual experiment standing alone, I think you uh, uh, probably see less of a problem than an article like the ones in the Times seems to present. And the, the, actually, the, the number of articles in the Times were, were uh, understanding. I don't think, I, you know, I, I think that they highlighted that there, there's some problem here, the psychologists are addressing it, and even suggest, published a piece that suggested this is actually all a part of normal science. I, I, you know, as one of, one area of my expertise as it is actually media, and I, I, I think that they were actually. No, I, I think they were, but, but but I mean, this individual yeah. effort, I think, is right. is, right, right. is uh, probably. Well, it was a positive response also because many psychologists have been interviewed or took part in this debate. Right. But your question is, what we think about these results? First of all, is there a failure to replicate? Well, we have to be careful in, in understanding the results of this paper because one of the major outcomes is that there is variation in the respect of the original findings. Mm -hmm. And this variation primarily pertain some important statistical aspects like effect size or mm -hmm. the size of the probability associated with the strength of a certain, of a certain result. Now, we cannot conclude from this result that there is a a complete failure to replicate. Mm -hmm. It's just telling us that the results tend to be weaker than what has been reported, consistently weaker, right. with many caveats that have been put in place. Mm -hmm. So when you have a large study like this, about a hundred, actually a hundred studies that uh, uh, were tempted to replicate, you have also a very interesting, a large data pool that can uh, guide you understanding what uh, uh, remediation could be taken, what could be some uh, problematic aspects in this result. Mm -hmm. And in this respect, there was no news, no news at all. Mm -hmm. We know that study with uh, a very uh, weak effect size are more problematic to be replicated. Right. We know that uh, probably we are too keen to just reach the magic point of five significance level and not try our best to have a more robust results that, as demonstrated in this study, tend to be more applicable. So these are just important lessons that we can uh, uh, get from this paper, but in essence are all things that we all know in the field, that we should try to have methods that are robust and give us effects that are particularly strong. Okay, so I mean, I would say that um, the um, study, or rather the article in the New York Times, uh, reporting on the studies. So, yeah, that was an important science. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, you know, basically reporting on some of the um, efforts that were made to replicate studies um, on the heels of, um, um, you know, people, I think a number of years ago, there's a cognitive psychologist, his name was Jonathan Schooler, who really came out and sort of made the case that some of the important effects that he got didn't replicate it was an, an important phenomenon. This has been a phenomenon that has been well known by psychologists for, for many years. So I don't really think that it throws the field into crisis, but I think it's important to understand 
some of the factors involved and also to understand what fields you're more likely to find this in and what factors you're not. So, what fields you're not? Yeah. Okay, so first of all, um, speaking about psychology, since that's the field I know best, although I assume it generalizes some other fields, um, one of the issues is there is more of a premium on doing studies which are not replications because those are the ones that are more likely to be published, right? If you publish a replication, there is less of a chance of it being accepted. If you publish a study where you get novel results, that's less likely to be accepted. So there are certain biases which lead in the direction of people submitting studies where they get positive results and also which lead in the directions of studying uh, studies which um, find the phenomenon which they um, are designed to find which lead to their being accepted by journals. Um, I think the other issue is that um, in terms of um, we're going to say replication. Um, there's the recent um, issue of American Psychologists, which is sort of the premier journal of the American Psychological Association, was devoted to this issue because of these concerns. And I went through it pretty carefully, and in two or three of the articles, they speak about other fields in which you find the same phenomenon. It turns out that the major fields in which you find the same phenomenon are in the uh, fields where you're studying the effectiveness of medications. Okay, well, I'm not surprised by that. Um, when you're studying the effectiveness of medications, there's a huge premium on being able to demonstrate that a medication is effective, okay? So you find, for example, when people are doing um, studies on the effectiveness of medications, first of all, that those studies which are funded by the firm pharmaceutical companies are much more likely to have positive results than those studies that are um, funded by um, 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 sort of government funding bodies, okay? Um, in my field, which is psychotherapy research, we're well aware of this phenomenon. A number of years ago, um, there was a key article which demonstrated that when you're looking at what therapy is an effective therapy, it turns out that something like 70% of the variance is accounted for by the theoretical allegiance of the investigator. In other words, if you have a cognitive therapist comparing cognitive therapy to psychodynamic therapy, you're more likely to have the cognitive therapy coming out more effective. If you have, um, if you have a psychodynamic therapist, being the principal investigator, you're more likely to have it come out the other way. Now, there are all sorts of reasons for this. There are both sort of um, conscious and more subtle reasons for it. Um, first of all, if people have an investment in terms of demonstrating that, let's take it into the general world of psychology, that a certain phenomenon really does exist, then what they do is there's something called um, pilot testing, in which you sort of try to figure out how to set up the study and manipulate the variables so that you're <coughs> more likely to be able to find the phenomenon you want to find. If you're not able to, um, to find the phenomenon you're looking for, then part of the process of doing a pilot study involves playing around with the different variables so that you can find a way of finding the phenomenon. So I think there's a way in which there is, a, you know, I think, any um, sort of science uh, or social science psychology is a, is a human activity and people have an investment. Um, you know, psychologists, no scientists are completely objective in the sense they don't really care ultimately which way the results come out. People have an investment in demonstrating certain phenomena. So they really sort of try their hardest in order to be able to demonstrate that phenomenon. So I think that, combined with the other factors, does lead towards a kind of bias so that even though Bill is right in an ideal world, 
you know, studies will be replicated again and again and again and over time the findings which are strongest are the ones which will remain. There are factors in the field which reduce the probability of replications being conducted. There are factors in the field which reduce the probability of people submitting replications. There are factors in the field that reduce the possibility of um, journals publishing um, studies with replications. So I think for all of those reasons, I think that this replication problem really is a, a meaningful phenomenon, one that we need to, to consider seriously. And cross-disciplinary, because it's all for all the disciplines. I mean, the, the, the argument about people want to, um, the journals only uh, uh, publish results which are um, positive, let's use that term, would hold for any field. I don't uh, yeah, see. Sure, sure. I'm not, so no, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying look, it's I, just I, I want to be clear. I, yeah. I don't think that this is a but, horrible crisis in one of the disciplines that have the, uh, 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 the New School for Social yeah. Research, only psychology. But, but let me, let me, let me uh, but address just, the replication but, issue. Okay. Um, uh, there's two ways to address it. The first is that uh, it's, it's probably true, though some journals now are um, intentionally publishing replication failures or, or successive replications. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and I, I reviewed several of them. Uh, I don't think it's a very good, pr I would think it's basically, I think it's a waste of pages. Nevertheless, I have, I have reviewed them. Uh, and uh, usually the criteria is that this is a, a finding that has had a, a major implication, uh, impact on the field, and um, uh, so it's, a, it's not a minor finding. They're not going to waste their pages on a minor finding. And that they have basically replicated it, truly replicated it in every, every little small detail. Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, so there is a, a change in, in the major journals in, in the psychological sciences right now. There's a, a push toward new so-called new statistics, which where effect size and confidence intervals become more important than just merely getting a 0.05 uh, mm -hmm. significance. Uh, so they're, they're, these are small, but they're very small sort of uh, in the field sort of right. changes. I mean, ultimately, you're not going to make your name by being very good at doing replication. No, studies. you're not going to make your name. Well, I think that's one of the issues. But, but but, they, but they, here I want to talk about the replication issue. If an experiment does not replicate well, and people begin to know it, I am not going to have a student spend their time right. on pursuing this phenomenon. Because what they're going to do is they're going to try to, because first you're going to have to get the phenomenon in order to understand what the rather more detailed parameters yeah, sure, around sure. that are. And if they can't get the basic phenomenon, you know, they've wasted three years. We, so pretty soon this phenomenon, be, and, and people will say, you're wasting your graduate students' time. You'll be telling them about it, and pretty soon this will no longer appear. It right. won't, you won't get a banner saying this, this fails. Is, this yeah. this fails to replicate. What it is is as a phenomenon, it just slowly becomes something which people are no longer doing mm -hmm. research on. But the the, the, the field has whittled it out right. implicitly as opposed right. to but right. when you talk about well, the. the yeah. Okay. Okay. I just want to say, in terms of the field whittling it out, I think what you're leaving out is the fact that there are major forces which reduce the likelihood of replication studies being conducted and major forces which reduce... Yeah, yeah, but, but, but if I'm understanding you built correctly, what, what, what is involved is that I'm doing research that's built upon, uh, not replicating, but built upon a phenomenon that has already been asserted. And in order to, for me to do my original research that's based on that previous uh, research, uh, if I can't replicate what they uh, asserted was true, then my research falls so, apart. Right. So, you know, right. so, 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 so it's kind of embedded it, in the, discu it, it, the, the discussion of right. science, uh, of, of the scientific discussion, that you need right. to be able to build upon something. And so I just it doesn't reviewed, work. You just I, I just received proceed. something for yeah. a high-impact psychology journal, yeah. one of the major journals in the field, and which do publish replication studies. And this was a replication study, but it began with I had my graduate students became interested in this and for two years we tried to get replicate this because we wanted to do some variation we couldn't do the variation because right. we couldn't get the original phenomenon right. so I'm going to tell you the struggle about the struggle we had to replicate right. this and Bill said anecdote is, is a common everyone right. in the lab it's has something right. like that and yes really, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and it becomes very widespread uh, and, but in this case it, it, was, it was published 
but it came from originally not an impetus. They weren't interested in replicating it because graduate student isn't going to get a job by replicating right. a study. They wanted to just take this phenomenon, which was of interest to the field, and try to understand it in more detail. But if the phenomenon wasn't going to replicate, they're not going to understand it in more detail. So, I mean, and people begin to know this, and they're going to say, you shouldn't waste your time doing this. It's a question of how long it takes for people to get to know, given all the factors, which I think um, sort of reduce the probability of replication studies being conducted and published. Yeah, but now we know, or we can have some intuition about the probability of replicating a study. Right, so as we size. are saying <coughs> again and again, it's time that we take this measure that we had for a long time into serious consideration. So, now, so the, okay. if I was going to summarize, you guys are saying it all works out in the end, it all and, works out. And, and you're saying, well, how long is that? It'll, how long does it take to all work out? Look, I do you know, think, and, and especially in the case of pharmaceutical research, uh, very big decisions can be made before. Right. before or there's a huge premium on being a clinician. I should say, a clinical psychologist would be more concerned about this, uh, perhaps, than, than uh, I, I think that's pure, probably pure true. Academic sociologist. I think that's true, but but I mean, there's a distinction between the finding yes. and what you make of the finding. Right. And I agree with Jeremy completely that a pharmaceutical firm has a, has a um, uh, forces at work mm -hmm. which makes them want to make something of the findings. So my understanding is, for instance, for um, SSRIs, the second most prescribed drug mm -hmm. class in the United States, very small effect sizes, uh, if any, and very small effect sizes, which means basically that the evidence is hardly compelling that in the population as a whole, it makes a huge amount of difference. It took a and long time for the field to really begin to accept that, though. Yeah, I don't think it completely accepts that now. Yeah. Uh, and it's partially because of these larger social forces, um, uh, which um, uh, um, makes this very difficult. Yeah. And and um, uh, uh, and similarly, when I talked about this, this sort of uh, but, but notion, it's also I talked about forces. how I always thought the priming literature oversold mm -hmm. itself mm -hmm. by making it about something like free will. Right. Um, and there, I think, certainly there's policing going on. Maybe the pharmaceutical companies are so powerful they can squash dissent. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, certainly, a lot of people objected to the sort of blown up rhetoric of the right. priming effects even before they began to um, question right. the so effect size the, of the, the priming issue, effects. I would like to go back to the issue of replicability that mm -hmm. uh, your, your original question. Most likely some of the failures or, uh, uh, to have uh, the same power as in the original um, uh, experiments might reflect uh, original features in the, in the studies. But I would like also to highlight another aspect that these studies uh, were all thought to be replicable. Mm -hmm. And this perhaps a strong bias, not a false bias, that we might have in the field of psychology. Mm -hmm. We all, uh, most of all of us, uh, work under the assumption that what we discover are general, universal, and therefore replicable <coughs> phenological processes. Right. This might be obvious, perhaps, or less problematic as a claim in the domain like color perception mm -hmm. or, or text perception. But you know, to make this claim about uh, uh, biases or, 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 or even memory studies might be a, a, a quite a strong assumption mm -hmm. because there could be a lot of cultural variability. And so the issue that these studies can be replicable perhaps reflect our lack of understanding of many variables that can determine whether a study lead to certain to certain But I would call that a lack of replicability. It is I, a would call, I would call that an exploration of the phenomenon which you begin to understand the parameters which I was going to know that. Technically, here, was considered to be a lack of replicability or a study yeah. that demonstrated a different effect size. In reality, it reflects, as you pointed out, uh, a lack of our uh, understanding, a lack of our 
uh, of the articulation of our, of our theory that we have really, uh, 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 way, really no good ways to understand the impact of cultural or, or, or many other facets of the So you know, I, I look at psych uh, psychological research as an, uh, as an outsider. And as an outsider, I'm looking for interesting things you know, mm -hmm. that, that, that could then inform my life or inform uh, my sociology or and my, my politics. And you're suggesting that it's exactly that move from inside the kind of uh, internal discourse of a scientific enterprise to try to uh, uh, use that discourse to uh, think of um, kind of larger implications that the problem lies unless we share with each other an understanding that a lot of the research should be viewed as being exploratory to highlighting the dimensions of uh, psychological problems, not necessarily uh, 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 demonstrating uh, psychological effects. But, you know, I, I, I'm okay. say, I have to say I'm saying that because I'm thinking about scandals in my own discipline mm -hmm. having to do with the problems of ethnography yeah. and, and uh, people wanting to ethnography to have as hard uh, um, uh, you know, to be as, as firm a ground as experimental yeah. research and uh, wanting it to be replicable and uh, uh, it's not very replicable and, 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 and you know sometimes very big scandals but it seems to me that actually if we understand the, the, this type of inquiry as being, and I don't care if it's called scientific or not, but inquiry as being a, a, an inquiry into uh, the dimensions of problems, uh, uh, the types of relationships that one can observe under certain conditions, uh, then I, I, uh, uh, I'm personally more comfortable with it. If you don't like this uh, resolution. Well, <laughs> I was just wanting to yeah. pick up on something you, a couple of things you said. Okay, so number one, in psychology, there's a very, very strong emphasis in what traditionally was referred to as the justification aspect of science, that is hypothesis testing, okay? So um, that's somewhat different than the natural sciences where hypothesis testing plays an important role, but that's only one part of it. So I think this very strong emphasis on hypothesis testing as being the essence of the science of psychology is something which is somewhat problematic because it leads in the direction of exclusively doing studies which are designed to test hypotheses but which are really designed to demonstrate phenomena. Number two, when you talk about being interested in studies which demonstrate interesting phenomena, well, those are the studies which are most likely yes. to get attention, yes. right? Yeah. And so it's not just the phenomenon which you're demonstrating, but it's the particular way in which you demonstrated it and the way in which it's written up. So, for example, recently uh, we were having some discussion of Stanley Milgram's uh, research, mm -hmm. um, which was conducted in the 1960s, where he demonstrated that, um, you know, people in a situation where the scientist uh, tells them to shock somebody as a way of testing their ability to influence the <coughs> learning, where the normal person will go much further than we would anticipate. That study was incredibly controversial. It had a huge impact, but one of the reasons it had an impact was not just because of the fact that it demonstrated something that we already knew, or I mean, perhaps people are unclear about that, but it was just such a such a like a, such a potent demonstration of a phenomenon that people paid attention to it. So I think there is a premium in terms of doing studies which demonstrate phenomena in a very kind of vivid way, and there's a, a, a greater likelihood that studies of that sort will get cited and have an impact. And in fact, for the people perhaps who didn't read this. Paper, we can point out that one of the factors that correlate with uh, uh, weaker uh, piece or, or weaker effect size is uh, a factor that they call surpriseness. So they rated how surprised this finding was 
and uh, these correlated therefore with the lack of, uh, of, of, of some the weaker effect. And is a real risk that we have in the field that right. we are so after solving. Really, it makes the rhetorically uh, attractive That's right. uh, piece is also the most vulnerable. Uh, in terms Not always, of but uh, you know, yeah. or, or it's associated. With Which it. my yeah. idea, yeah. the, the Milgram study replicates quite well. Yeah, no, it, yeah. It's, 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 it's a tricky yeah. issue because and the Milgram study, to be clear, I mean Stanley uh, did this because it was short. It was after World War II, yeah. and uh, <laughs> wait, I'm for, uh, for the audience. Yeah. It was after World War II, and a part of the discourse, public discourse at the time, was. Those are the Germans that uh, respond to authority, and we don't right. respond to no, authority. That was a powerful study. And, and it, he wanted to say, no, we're all equally susceptible to this authority. Yeah. So, yeah. It, I mean, it was undertaken to have a large public yes. uh, impact, and it did. Uh, yeah, right. So I, I think what, what I really want to sort of highlight here is the sort of the rhetorical aspect of the research enterprise. It's just important to really sort of keep that in mind. It's not just a matter of does a study replicate or not. It's that any study is part of an ongoing conversation and the way in which the study is written up and presented and used is part of a rhetorical process and plays a role in a, quote, scientific conversation. So in the final analysis, it's not just a matter of will science will in the final analysis weed out those effects which are powerful and which ones aren't, but rather, how does the conversation take place among scientists? Yeah. Well, time? it's not just among scientists. If you're talking about the larger public impact, it's the journalists. Yeah. Uh, and they do um, glom on to the, um, uh, what buttons sell a newspaper. Yeah, but we feed the news. Yeah. And we are so ahead in that. Well, these, of course, what happens is these are yes, exactly. misparatorized. No, no, it's, it's, it's not only the newspapers mm -hmm. that address a general public, but it's also uh, interdisciplinary uh, uh, interaction. So, it's, or uh, yes. because, you know, if we're smart, we actually learn from other disciplines because mm -hmm. these disciplines. Uh, uh, our, uh, our discipline, so it helps us discipline our inquiry okay. and we can move forward, but it also blinds us to things. So it makes sense to pay attention to what is happening in other disciplines. Okay, so let's, let's but, take but, a phenomenon. But then this problem uh, well, well, I appears. Mean, Cass Sunstein had an um, article in the Times, I think on Sunday or sometime around that. I read on the internet, so I don't mm -hmm. know exactly right, right. what day it was. <laughs> um, and um, uh, basically, he was in the argument of um, applying uh, behavioral sciences to government, uh, and you know how to how to fill out how to design a form that people yes, will actually be able sure. to understand and fill out. Uh, and for you know for someone like Cass Sunstein, a big issue, of course, is nudging, uh, which comes directly out of uh, Danny Kahneman, Kahneman and Tversky's work, uh, which not only had an impact. Larger, it had an impact on economics and, yes. and probably right. sociology, a lot yes, of lots yes. of fields. Uh, and so here was work. Uh, I'm sure there must be one or two replication failures of some of his phenomena out there, right. but they're pretty robust. Yeah. And and not everybody uses. And he talks about heuristics, so not everybody uses an availability heuristic. Not everybody uses the various heuristics, but um, there is a tendency for people to use them, and it leads to certain if you like, irrational decisions. Mm. Uh, and that has an impact. And, and one of the applications is that you can, by recognizing that people are influenced by these sorts of things, you can nudge them in ways which are more socially productive. But what's, or, what's, or also socially problematic. Uh, whichever way you want to, if right. way, but, but they, I mean, they say not, socially I mean, problematic. Right. Connection right. Between this and the well, my point is, Jeff, Jeff, uh, Jeff said that one of the problems is that you, it, maybe we should keep this all an infield discussion, and maybe it's, we should sort of um, be, be, be more cautious in moving things to other fields. Uh, no, no, no. 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 I'm, just, I'm just pointing out that the problem is manifested when you move outside. Yes, but, but, there are not, still, not, but it means that but there are some phenomena which are robust enough, which yes, the field yeah, has sure. converged upon, I'm in favor which of other it. people <laughs> should... Um, uh, and and the argument can be made in the other direction as well. You know, 
when it comes, for example, to doing uh, research on the treatment of cancer, the argument is made that we shouldn't wait as long as we do before we give FDA approval towards a, a drug which is considered to be in the experimental phase. So the argument can be made in the other direction. In fact, you, one can even fantasize or make this argument that uh, the uh, uh, weak effect that we find and are really surprising is a sign of maturity of the field because the important effects, the major effects, oh. have been discovered already. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think we have to worry about that. <laughs> I mean, you, 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 uh, that was a paradoxical that. argument. Well, 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 so, so uh, but, uh, there is something ironical for me uh, and, and, uh, in this discussion because if you think, you know, about 10, 15 years ago, there was a mushrooming of, of various scientific uh, uh, journals or, or outlets that use the internet. Right. And it seems, you know, that this was a, a free, cheap way uh, uh, in, uh, mm -hmm. that, that the scientific community can use to disseminate important findings, right. uh, including those that failure or replicate that are so important and vital. For our, you don't have for to, our, to go back to our, uh, our earlier discussion. You don't have to worry about wasting paper. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, but you know, it it's, it's, be, it's uh, ironical that <coughs> we do not have many sites or, or many group of scientists who uh, had initiative where everyone can essentially put all the failures to replicate, mm -hmm. and this would be a very vital and important initiative. Yes. But in Chile. Probably, but, but, but it's but, not. But there's a question of where the initiative for doing that would, would come from. There are, there are well, it's a question of alerting the community that there is this possibility, and you know, a little bit of, of peer reviewing, or be sure that some standards are met. But it's interesting that this has not been massively exploited as an opportunity that is there. No, but what I'm saying is that there is less um, incentive for a researcher to put their energy into no, 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 it. No, 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 he's, he's the saying that along the way, I'm, do, I'm trying to do a study, I'm, uh, I'm having trouble replicating, based on some, a previous study, yeah. I'm having trouble replicating it, so just have a site where you report. Oh, I see, so you don't have to worry about whether uh, or not it's published in the mainstream journal. It's, it's, yeah. ju it's just, a, it, it's kind of a data bank. Yeah. Uh, to uh, circumvent exactly the problem that uh, you cited, we all cited about publishing negative findings or failure to achieve. So I, I was thinking. There are, uh, uh, just for, yeah. there are places where you can register the experiment that you. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you begin an experiment, you register that experiment, mm -hmm. and then you report the results of those experiments mm -hmm. at the end along with uh, the archiving of your database, right. whatever the nature is. And right. those sites exist, yeah. Yeah. and um, uh, uh, funding agencies are more and more inclined to force you to utilize them. Right. Right. That's but they're not publications, they're sort sure. of archival databases. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so the, the, the issue would simply be to have uh, such archives yeah, but who's ever going to look at them? Well, that's, that, that's well the it's also, yeah. you know, again, there because are many... The same no, no, actually looking at them uh, would solve the problem, but, uh, or some version of it. But, but then, this goes back to your uh, point, given the amount of tension that I have, the amount of mental, you know, time in the day, how much time am I going to spend looking at failed experiments when my project is... You know, I, I have in, I need to do original research. Yeah, if you are going to look that, at that, it uh, based on but, public, but, but you public are going material. to look at it yeah. if you're if you're do, trying to replicate right. this thing and you right. fail and you say, is this because yes. I'm an idiot yeah. or right. somebody else right. is also yeah. having this problem? But there right. are also easy way to pay attention to that is to make a link between this data bank and the original right. paper in the journal. So, so well, I assume uh, there is such a link, yeah. but uh, but no, you still have to want to look it up. Yes, uh, um, you still mm -hmm. want to have to look it up. So actually, making visible these attempts w would, uh, or knowing a place where you could see this, yeah, Google uh, Scholar could make a link, right, right. Would make it much more easy. There are there are many uh, potential solutions to the problem. Right. The question is, how many of these solutions are likely to be implemented? For example, people have argued right. for a long time that. You know, there should be an insistence that, um, you know, funding agencies have or journals have that people uh, basically make their hypotheses public before they collect the data, right. you know, so right. that at that point 
we know in advance what the hypotheses are. Right. What are the what is the likelihood of this ever really being implemented? Right. Yeah, there's a disincentive to do right. that. Yeah. yeah. I also so, so think I, that there's yeah, something I'm remembering destructive about that. Well, I'm so that, that because I think it views the scientific processes. Again, you you criticize hypothesis testing, and and uh, uh, you know it, it makes it too mechanical because often what happens is you don't get the right. findings right. that you want, but you, see but you have, but it suddenly reveals something about the phenomenon right. which was very interesting. Right. Right. Do you then say I failed? Well, no, no, I don't think you no, failed. That, that's a very I think good point. you got an yeah. insight. Well, so, so, but, but the problem is, I I think. Uh, trying to understand, uh, being sympathetic to Jeremy's point, is that then you, the, the material tends to be presented as if there were a hypothesis that you've tested. Yes, you know, because the you know, journal so, requires so, that. Right. It, 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 right. Certain, so, so it kind of distorts. Kind of, you know, so some of the, some, no, this is, I think, like some of the more interesting findings come out of a discovery process right. in which you don't end up demonstrating phenomenon you initially you thought, wanted right, to right, demonstrate, right. so you start playing with the data yeah, right, until right. you find things you haven't anticipated. Right, right. And usually then you follow them up with several other experiments and right. try to nail down. Yeah. But it's interesting that in making all of the decision, you have no idea if it is a failure to replicate, if it is, you know, a, a, a result that you would get if you try a second time yeah. or a third yeah. time. Well, and we go back to the point that is at this point in our field, like presumably in every other field, no, it's very it difficult I, to, I, I, to I think, guess this probability. I think an awful lot of the this universe of probabilities is well, part of the problem. Problem. the one problem that fine. we have that a lot of people discuss. So, sorry, the one problem that a lot of people discuss, which we haven't mentioned yet, is there a tendency now toward journals to take single study papers. Uh, and I mean, there are some, it, 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 for a long time, journals, you have to have five or six or seven experiments to get mm -hmm. published. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, in journals like Psych Science, one or two studies and, you're, and if they find it interesting, mm -hmm. you're in. Uh, I would expect that replication failures are probably higher for <coughs> studies in Psych Science than they are in other studies, mm -hmm. because they, they, you don't have this huge, I mean, basically, what you've asked is somebody spend two or three years of doing studies in order to get this one paper published. Right. And uh, uh, the field is, uh, the professional field is less tolerant of that. And the, the journal publication industry has responded to it by having these very short papers, which mm -hmm. I think leads to probably greater um, replication, uh, mm -hmm. small effect size sorts of things. Yeah. But, these journals also are becoming more, more, more and more sensitive to effect size mm -hmm. um, than they were in the past. I think one of the questions, just to sort of shift back to something we originally discussed, <coughs> um, is well, is this um, a problem which is limited to psychology, or does it take place in other fields as well? And if so, in what fields? Okay, so again, this latest issue of American Psychologist, where they speak about other fields in which there's this problem with replication. I looked up the citations, and they were all studies on the effectiveness of medications. So, for example, do either of you know, you know, in terms of, let's say, physics, for example, which is always spoken about as the sort of ultimate natural sciences, is failure to replicate a consistent problem? Do people have data on that in physics and I don't know. You have to divide physics up because, you know, yeah. if you're doing a, an experiment, where, which requires you to observe something billions of light years away, you have one one shot chance right. of doing that. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, a lot of those big mega projects are one shot chances. Um, uh, I do know when you read them, they talk about how iffy the data is, mm -hmm. how um, right. uh, how there's multiple ways to slice the pie, um, and it really becomes a field consensus on whether to believe it or not. Yeah. Uh, so it's not a replication failure. It's more like how you go about doing it. So I, 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 I think that these problems uh, <coughs> in psychology and in other disciplines uh, have to do um, with uh, as much with representation uh, of of the, of the field mm -hmm. and uh, strengths and weaknesses of the implicit philosophy of science that um, yeah, uh, um, kind of underlies the way it's represented. You know, so that an awful, you know, I think that 
ethnographers make a mistake by uh, purporting that they're, they went out and observed the world and anyone going out and observing the world is going see to the see, same thing. We'll see the same thing. Uh, uh, so, uh, but I don't think that means, therefore, that ethnography uh, is uh, not a way of knowing. So, so th there's a need to actually match the uh, kind of uh, the strengths, but also the limitations of uh, of a methodology uh, uh, um, in order to actually develop. Uh, I, physics, I would like to yeah. go back to physics because it presents a very interesting uh, example. Nowadays in physics, you have the opportunity to measure uh, events that are reliable, replicable, but incredibly, incredibly rare. I mean, the whole CERN in Geneva right. has yes, been right. built to discover it's events that thing. are exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But this maybe is a sign of maturity, but that, that, of, that, that, of, of maturity well, of, of that, that field, because we have a precise theory that despite this well, yes. size, if you want. Well, you see, yeah, there, 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 there the issue is you're able to make very, very elaborate and complex predictions, you know, on the basis of mathematical modeling, etc., mm -hmm. etc. So I think in that kind of yeah, situation... But the CERN stuff, as I understand when I read it, and when I read the, the, the discussions about it, you do not directly see that particular molecule doing that particular thing. They are making assumptions yes. about yes, assumptions and then, of course, within the field, yes. there are people who question those yeah, assumptions. Fair enough. Well, uh, not as much I mean, probably in other fields, but you know, we are it's yeah. exactly the same kind of inference that we make. We don't see the mind, but we make a bunch I of mean, inferences about I mean, the mind was, or culture. I, right. I mean, in, in the cognitive neuroscience field, Vols published that article yeah. quite a few years ago, which said, you know, this whole field is... Um, yeah. even though it seems to have be very high tech. But you know, it, it also points out that, uh, that there are some disciplines that are relatively young and there is still a lot of uh, accumulation of knowledge that we have to reach in order to... Yeah, and, and, I, I don't know if uh, uh, youth and maturity is necessarily uh, the best metaphor. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, um, you know, people have been asking philosophical questions for a very, very long time. It's a very mature discipline. <laughs> <laughs> but, very but, mature. But, 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 but he's he still, he still surviving. No. And, and, <laughs> and, and actually, that's, uh, it, it is interesting. So, so, so why is it that uh, in some areas of human inquiry that we are satisfied that all we have are questions and tentative answers and there's very little accumulation. I, I, I think well, it's, well, I, it has to do, it has to do with claims to expertise is the issue. Right. I think in certain fields there is a real premium on being able to claim a certain kind of expertise. So in psychology there is a real value to being able to argue that well psychologists do have an expertise and that's meaningful. So I think the issue is that the argument which is often made is that it's a pre-paradigmatic discipline, it's still quite young, and eventually as it matures, things are going to change. I'm not so sure that's the case. Well, I'm, I, I'm, sorry, I I'm totally I'm, sure, just, just to like, finish okay, this, okay. when you look at, at, for example, cognitive neuroscience, I mean, it's something that didn't exist in its form even 15 years ago, so it's very young. Out of question, it's a baby. Well, but the questions that they're asking are just right. They're still the same. Well, I mean, cognitive neuroscience was born to an, a large extent because technology. It's a new technology. Sure. And um, then there are, there are major issues there in the cognitive neurosciences in terms of the way in which the data are interpreted and represented, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. But, but uh, let me ask to address that. Um, one of the things why I'm, I, I, I'm concerned about this public discussion about replication mm -hmm. values and the like is because I think that there's a larger political agenda. I think both on the right and on the left, mm -hmm. there's a deep distrust of what I'll call empirical social science. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that this feeds into that distrust, yes. both in the right and the left. And at some level, I, I, I chastise my colleagues in the field that run around making these statements um, about replication failures and the like, because I think they're deeply doing a disservice to the field. Uh, and that they're feeding into 
the kind of discourse that exists both on the left and the right, mm -hmm. uh, which would prefer to do away with um, uh, these, um, these empirical investigations and their claim to expertise and their claim of knowing and, 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 and the like. Uh, um, uh, the claim of expertise and knowing is more of an argument from the left. The a, a claim of, I mean, uh, uh, the, that these, this is not real science is, is the um, uh, uh, argument on the right. But, uh, I, you know, I, my own feeling is, and what I've been trying to say, is that we're, we're proceeding as almost any other science. Uh, uh, we have, uh, and, and like any other science, what is on the cutting edge has a tentative quality to it. I, I think the one thing I would add is that the sort of like term science is a very, very sort of complicated term, you know, and it, the, you know, there's a whole demarcation uh, debate, you know, when is something a science and when is something a not science, okay? And I think psychologists have a big investment in calling themselves scientists but they're not scientists in the same sense that people in the natural sciences are scientists, and I think it's important to acknowledge that. How so, Jeff? Yeah. Tell me how I'm not the same kind of scientist as a scientist in the because natural sciences. Because the phenomena which you are investigating uh, are not as predictable. I think the phenomena are not as strong. I think uh, the phenomena are somewhat more complex. I think there are differences between uh, investigating psychological phenomena and physics and biology. So you never talk about methodology, you just talk about no, 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 no. Um, I don't, um, I, I mean, no, I mean, what usually yeah. was meant when one talks about science is one talks about method. Yeah. Not, one, not the phenomenon one studies, mm -hmm. but the method in which one goes about trying to uh, But what well, makes yeah, psychology... You talk about theories and the and opportunity that you have or making a prediction of that. Can well, that's the methodology. That's no, the methodology. Not really methodology. One of the issues, it's, one of the issues it's, in psychology. It's the way in which you look, look at theories. A, 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 a literary scholar, a literary scholar, can be very interested in the nature, human nature, but they don't go about studying human nature by uh, um, developing hypotheses, develop and doing results in which the community as a whole accepts that result. They're they're interested in using that say a novelist to, to, to sort of appeal to people about a way of, of, of li people live. Uh, and, and, that's a, and that's an excellent way of proceeding. It's not the scientific method and nor would they ever make a claim that it's a scientific method. You could argue what, what kind of methodology falls on, under it. But basically, although people think we may be naive in this respect, we do think that we're arriving at quote, some sort of objective evidence that within the community they agree to. And, and you know, this gets us far away from the replicability issue. But, you know, it, it, I mean, method is very much part of what science is about. So, so I think that the issue is about the, um, um, how we come about knowing and the line we draw between a more scientific way of knowing and uh, let's say, a more humanistic way yeah. of knowing. What Jerry and, Bruner called paradigmatic versus narrative modes of thinking. Okay. And I think that disciplines, and psychology is included, but sociology even more so, um, um, straddle that distinction. And, uh, and individuals, as they're trying to know the world, <coughs> uh, uh, invest more or less on each side of the divide. Right, but the and, replication issue right. focuses narrowly on those psychologists who have yes. adopted this sort of experimental right. scientific Absolutely. methodology. Absolutely, and, 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 uh, and how steady it is on its own terms is actually an issue, and I think you're right, that there are people who want to explain away a way of knowing, a more scientific way yeah. of knowing, and, and they jump on this and impute too much into yeah. it. But on the other hand, there are people who have a great deal invested in knowing uh, scientifically as opposed to knowing humanistically. Yes. And uh, uh, they will be hyper uh, sensitive and, uh, and uh, uh, assert 
that uh, no problem here. That they, right, that there, there, there are people who so, have so I, I'm actually interested, I think that you know we've probably gone, uh, yeah, yeah. we've kind of covered the field. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in uh, exploring this more fully later on. Uh, on public seminar, I'm particularly interested in uh, speaking to colleagues in other fields, not about psychology, but about the same problems in other fields. So, so as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking about the controversies, uh, uh, particularly revolving around uh, Alice Goffman's uh, research in Philadelphia, a uh, sociologist, uh, uh, where um, you know, she's asserted of doing, asserted to be doing many, many uh, uh, unethical things, and people are defending her for doing. For what is she doing? She, she she studied uh, essentially a gang mm. uh, in, in, in Philadelphia, and and uh, uh, some people Never claim correct. that she 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 went off, uh, she went to the other side, uh -huh. and and uh, and then the issue of you know the fundamental problem of the sign, you know, the, what is your relationship? Uh, uh, with the natives that you're studying, yeah. mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, and is there a stance that you can take apart from uh, 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 your subject's uh, position? You know, do, we, do we have a superior scientific <coughs> position? And you know, there's a, really a lot of debate about that. So I, I, I'm really quite curious uh, and, and uh, about how this pro this um, uh, apparent scandal. In psychology, illuminates not uh, only you know the, the issues in psychology, which you, you described very, very in a very interesting way here, uh, but in uh, other disciplines as well. So you know, naturally, because of the desire to think of psychology as being scientific, in our discussions here, we've been referring to in quotes the harder sciences. But uh, I, I'm curious, you know, for another debate. What is the relationship between this issue, a, a, a relationship between this controversy uh, as it exists in psychology and, and uh, normal science in the other social sciences? Uh, so thank you very much. You know, I, I think this was an interesting discussion. I, I hope you're satisfied that you said uh, that you got to say what you wanted to say. And, uh, and you th do you think that we? Uh, Covered the right issues. Is there anything that I think we did? Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, okay, good. Thanks. <laughs> okay, thanks, Jeff. Okay, so we'll see what we see. We have the expectations coming here. So we had no expectations, so what I always did. said yeah. is not. I certainly did. Yeah, you yeah. thought I was going to. Uh, no, 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 not you. I uh, mean, Jeremy said what I thought Jeremy was going to say. Well, you said what I thought you were going to say. Exactly. And the whole point was to let the rest of the world know about this dialogue. Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much. For okay, thank you. <coughs>